Uh, I'll now share my screen and pick up the United Kingdom uh, case study and give you an insight to North East Scotland and transitions towards agroecological farming systems. The case study is dealing with a dilemma of the production of public goods while maintaining viable production of private goods and securing the economic and social sustainability at the farm level. The farming systems being looked at are mixed farming with livestock and general cropping, the dominant farm systems in Northeast Scotland. The transitions that we're looking at, or rather the farms that are part of the study are distributed across the different technological and institutional steps in the transitions towards agroecological farming systems. The actors are also distributed across each element of that. The members of the multi-actor platform is, are drawn from each of the actor groups which are contributing in some fashion to the farming systems that I mentioned. And they're providing insights to the networks of product flows and information and knowledge, which is very tightly connected in a Scottish context. And the two actors of greatest significance are the retailers in the food and drink sector that influence the supply and the standards of uh, produce and the land managers that are influencing or directly responsible for delivery on the ground. And the systems we found are quite vulnerable to losing local processing capacity. The closure of an abattoir, for instance, has significant ramifications on the sustainability of sectors. Now, some of the challenges that are faced with respect to public goods in the area are soil erosion, uh, water quality, and the issues relating to the impacts of water on soil and plant, animal livestock uh, welfare issues, um, and other aspects of greenhouse gas emissions and, uh, and social issues, which are public goods as well. Now, along the bottom of this slide, on the bottom left, you'll see an image of example of the loss of soil and illustration of how significant that loss of a public good could be in terms of delivery of healthy produce and the loss of the natural capital of that farm. Here, the innovation is a farmer-led innovation, utilizing the tools, which in fact are ones used in the production of potatoes, but deploying them to break up the, uh, the surface of the soil to create these artificial ridges, then use that to break up the flow of water, the loss of soil, and to generate or recreate the ecological focus areas. So delivering on biodiversity or reducing the loss of biodiversity and reducing the loss of soil and water runoff. And then the top right, a reminder that one of the practices which is being explored and utilized and we've tested the significance of in our models is that of organic fertilization. So those models to which I refer are three applied at farm level. The SMART tool is a holistic sustainability assessment tool looking at social well-being and good governance as well as environmental integrity and economic resilience. And we come out with characteristic shapes of sustainability of individual farms, of different farm systems, or of a hypothetical farm in the area. And then we can look at changes with respect to hypothetical farm practices, to which I'll make mention in a moment. One of the other tools, the Cool Farm tool, looks at and quantifies the greenhouse gas emissions from different farm practices and farm systems. And here we see what the first, second and third ranking of greenhouse gas, the source of greenhouse gas emissions would be within a um, mixed farming system. So knowing that, giving us a baseline, we're able then to think about what trade-offs there might be by removing one farm system and supplanting it with another. In this case, no-till and direct drilling, and the, some of the implications of that, abating greenhouse gas emissions, and some very promising uh, indications of the magnitude of the abatement that might be achieved, but with trade-offs, for instance, increasing 
the value added and the farm income. But the greenhouse gas emission intensity could be could be more than 50% gain in as in loss reduction in general cropping uh, and very significant in mixed farming. Similarly, with respect to organic fertilization, we see broadly a similar trend, significant positive benefits, which you would not be surprised about, but it gives us an idea of the magnitude and importantly, the trade-offs, because those trade-offs are the part of the dialogue that then needs to take place with farmers and other actors when thinking about, well, what are the drivers and barriers to the transitions to agroecological systems? And of these, climate change is both a driver and a barrier. Interestingly, so is culture and mindset. And the question then is, how does one overcome these barriers or help accelerate the impacts of the drivers? And what we're looking at then are what sort of policy structures and uh, institutions that might help overcome the barrier and deliver the driver. And it gives us a picture for this area of what those are, that we can then think about the policy instruments that are currently most significant, the highest influence, Farm Advisory Service being one of those, which is a principal form of communication and exchanging knowledge. And those that have got least influence, like the supermarkets run um, approaches, and indeed land reform having a minimal or a low influence. And the insight to the significance of that has come from the actors knowing themselves where the weaknesses would be, for instance, in bringing new entrants into farming. And um, that is informing us as to where we might seek to advise reconsidering the guidance on land reform and new entrants. So performance and relevance can then be considered. And in selected lessons, just a few observations here are about the significance of the actors to which I've already made relevance the importance of the flows of communication and networks that are tightly linked in Scotland, and that to overcome the barriers to transition really requires some changes in institutional arrangements, investment in knowledge and demonstration. So the farmer on the top right stresses the farmer to farmer learning being the most powerful tool in his book. So the peer to peer and some macro and micro level incentives. And the multi-actor platforms themselves are really significant mechanisms for giving us insights to the systems, the farm systems and the farming systems, as well as farm practices and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that gives us some of the evidence base on which our recommendations can then be developed. So with that, I'll invite you to look at our story map where these items are picked out in more detail and to conclude by observing that the outlook for the uptake of and the transition to agroecological farming systems is very good with the relevant and efficient policies, put in, effective policies put in place and a high quality of sharing of information in an open science culture of access, trust and sharing of information. And with that, I'll conclude and thank everyone who contributed to the UK case study.